Our next session, Apple III, a closer look. A look at an overview of the Apple III and all the nasty rumors about its allegedly poor design. Mike McGinnis, take it away. Yeah. 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 The Apple III was announced on May 19, 1980 at the National Computer Conference in Anaheim, California. Uh, it started shipping to dealers in June. Uh, it became available, uh, available in limited quantities in fall of 80 and didn't actually reach retail in, in any kind of real volume until spring of 81. Uh, over its lifetime, there were three different versions. There was uh, the, the original 12-volt version um, that when Apple, uh, when, the, when the bugs started popping up, they re-released re it as a 5-volt version. It was introduced in the fall of 81, and it was intended to address the numerous problems that users were having. Um, and eventually there was a, a redesign uh, and greatly improved Apple III Plus, which came out in December of 83 and was discontinued a couple of months later. Mike, yeah. uh, kind of code word there on 12 volt, 5 volt, you might say what that was actually referred to? Um, well, the, it, it mainly referred to um, the, the machine's memory more than anything else. Um, the, the initial, uh, the, at the time, they, they'd said that uh, uh, because it, uh, when the Apple III was first introduced, RAM chips were so expensive, um, and as as, uh, as time went on, uh, RAM became cheaper and easier to manufacture, and they could do it uh, more efficiently. So they could, you could have a 256K 5-volt Apple uh, III that actually ran with less power um, than the 12-volt uh, 100 uh, 128K Apple III. And, then, and they were so similar, in fact, that you can modify uh, either of the boards, the 5 volt or the 12 volt, to take the other kind of memory card uh, fairly easily. So uh, the specs, um, it's, uh, it was based on the Centertech 6502A processor, which they rated at 2 megahertz and actually ran at about 1.8. Uh, the initial models came with 128K RAM, uh, and then later with 256K, and they supported up to 512K memory. Uh, you had the color composite out like you did with the uh, Apple II, but it also came with um, uh, RGB, but it was a digital uh, XRGB, which means that it will, this won't work as is with um, a 2GS monitor. Um, and at the time, there weren't any monitors out that would support the, the digital XRGB, which is one of the things people complained about. They said, we have all these great graphics capabilities, but we don't have any way to access them. Uh, there were three, uh, the, you know, the Color modes, we have 16 colors at uh, 280 by 192, or 16 shades at 560 by 192, and you can get the same in monochrome. There were three different text modes. The 40 column, it also introduced uh, the 80 column mode, uh, which wasn't present before. And then uh, there was a 40 column color text mode, basically. You can define the color uh, and the background uh, for each letter uh, in any of 16 colors. Apple III came out and they cut the price to $34.95. Um, 
3.5 and then dropped further with the 3 plus to 29.5. This is a, a podcast that talks. Is a, anyone familiar with this day in Apple history? Apple Matters podcast? This is one of theirs. Was 
uh, they should have just called it the Apple Four. Steve Jobs knew, you know, being a money man, uh, but you know they lost infinite incalculable right. amounts of money. No, the best much money is he wanted. <laughs> the best though is, is Randy Wigginson's quote about the Apple III. Even Mike Markle didn't like machine Even Mike Markle didn't like the machine very much. Uh, the case design um, was this heavy, uh, there's a cast, cast aluminum, and because Steve Jobs didn't want fans, he thought they were noisy and elegant. He was right. Um, you know, he was, but his solution was to design this, this giant heat sink of aluminum that would, suppose, that would suck the heat away from the board. Uh, it didn't work. Um, and, for, and he also didn't uh, consult with uh, Wendell Sander, the, the guy in charge of the project, or his engineering team before he designed the case. So, he basically walked down and said, here's the case, and, and uh, they had to redesign the board uh, to fit his case specifications. Um, the case was made, uh, manufactured by a company that normally made uh, engine blocks for automobiles, so it's not a very elegant thing, and you can see right here, It does have double overhead cams. It does, yes. <laughs> <laughs> this is the case. Oh, it's very heavy. And it's not a What's the other lie you All right. Well, one of the things that they told the uh, Apple, Apple III users who were complaining about failures was to lift it up and drop it three or four inches to reseat the chips. <laughs> Which you're going to have to be, or you know, one of the lighter previous machines, doesn't, doesn't make a lot of sense until so you want to feel just how heavy it is back here. Wow. How heavy this thing is. I, Maybe I can do that without damaging the table. No. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, just a little bit. So. And the motherboard sat on this pan right here and it sat underneath the keyboard. This is the CPU right here and it sat actually under this keyboard, so there was no ventilation at all. Uh, is that like a tray that slides in? Uh, yeah, basically it screws in at the bottom. Um, and in fact, one of the things that they did, this is a leader. Later case, you can see they basically just drilled some holes along here to try and help alleviate the heat, which didn't do anything because you had the plastic sitting on top of it, blocking and keeping everything in anyway. So I passed it around, but uh, <laughs> no, uh, I can pass the motherboard around. Let's see that. Uh, and originally, we should know this on the motherboard, not particularly. How was the edge remembering? So they have that that. That's, uh, that's the daughter board, yes. Yeah, so. Uh, and the slots are actually electrically compatible with Apple II peripherals, um, but because of the way the memory is implemented, that means that you can't use uh, slot zero cards uh, or any kind of memory card uh, that work with the Apple II. But other than that, pretty much everything worked if you had a device. <coughs> the other, the other thing was that it, the cards <laughs> had to fit in this length. If it was longer than this, it wasn't going to work with the Apple III. Well,
VidSeat.com. Keep listening to find out how you can win a fifth generation video iPod courtesy of the Make Labs. Our podcast hosting is provided by CashFly.com. February 6, 1981. Question, what time is it? Answer, I have no idea. I use an Apple III. <laughs> the Apple III had been out since November, and while it was positioned as a powerful business computer, it was, in actuality, one of the worst machines Apple ever produced. Naturally, no company is ever going to admit that one of the products they produce is an absolute dog, so the marketing department put a brave face on it and pushed the Apple III as though it were as revolutionary as the writings of Adam Smith as far as businesses were concerned. It was only a matter of time before the problems of the Apple III were noticed by the general public. The engineers at Apple were rightly worried the entire time, and one of the first flaws noticed was that the computer couldn't keep time. The culprit was a single chip, but instead of replacing the malfunctioning lump of silicon, Apple announced the computer would no longer have date and time functionality built in. <laughs> in an interesting side note, the Apple III was designed poorly by a committee, and the committee was chaired by Steve Jobs. In any event, the public heard the first rumblings that the Apple III never should have left the factory floor during this week in 1981. Uh, it came with the, the chip and a couple of other components that you put them in yourself. Uh, and when the board, as the boards go around, you'll see there's a, there's a little hole over on one side, and that's where this, that's where this clip for the power went. Did it work? Yeah. It, well, Apple said that um, the, uh, the, first they said that they couldn't get the, the chip in sufficient quantities, then they said they were having problems with it, but nobody ever said whose fault it was. It's kind of interesting, AppleLogic.org, um, the, the guys that do the uh, car watch card, took a, a close look at some of the engineering flaws with the Apple III, and one of the things that they looked at was the clock chip. And they, they went back through some of the documentation, and they found that uh, the circuit that, uh, that came with the chip that was designed by National Semiconductor was not the one that Apple used on the board. Um, so I don't, I don't know enough about reading that reading the diagrams to, to know where the fault lies, but it is interesting that they used a different circuit. Well, there was a huge problem to replace the clock oscillator, the, the crystal oscillator, uh, several inches of in trace away from the chip. And that's an extremely high impedance circuit. It needs to be like a half inch. And so that's probably where, I mean, this is just one of numerous problems that they have. It's obviously one of them. What's that? You're just holding it wrong. Right, exactly. <laughs> 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 well done, Mother. Well played, sir. This is Indian Wells. Well played, sir. No, those are actually. Is that a repair? No, that's how it's designed after that. That's how it came. Yeah. They, they have to do all kinds of weird stuff to get it to fit inside that case of this problem. Um, Anyone with a question or argue with my child's ever? Probably not. So yeah, the, the chip began to fail. And, yeah, that's standard. The month would show up as just question marks. It would often count up to, to 30 or 40 o'clock in the hours before it would go over to the next day. <laughs> they eventually removed the chip, like I said, and offered rebates to users who were the time machine. Or eight hour days. Right. Yeah. They lowered the price on the machine by fifty dollars, offered rebates, and then later started shipping the uh, upgrade kit. And they never gave them a, a real technical explanation as to what had happened. Um, software. Uh, very little software was actually ready. Part of the problem was initially this this uh, computer had a two year design window, you know, from, from design to ship, um, and it kept getting pushed back or pushed and pushed and compressed, and eventually. Uh, Sanders team had 10 months to get this thing out the door. Um, in the meantime, the software team basically had no time to get any internal software ready. The only thing that shipped with it, other than uh, the, the operating system and, and Business Basic, was VisiCalc 3, um, which wasn't designed by Apple. Uh, 
in their own word processor, Apple Writer 3, which was supposed to be the, the, the new latest integration, didn't even ship until fall of 81, almost two years after this thing had been introduced. The early versions of the operating system and business basic were very buggy, and SOS was known as a big memory hog. Um, Pascal wasn't released until late 1981. The other languages that uh, developers would use uh, were repeatedly, repeatedly misshipped dates. Uh, and Apple ran into the developer problem as well. Nobody wanted to develop for a buggy machine. They wanted Apple to fix the problems and then they would write the software, and that just didn't happen. Um, and by the time it did, it was too late. Uh, and finally, SOS <coughs> was considered complicated and difficult to use. And you can see people started calling it SOS rather than Apple Sauce, which is what Apple had hoped they would call it. Um, business users started complaining. They said it was, they thought it was underpowered. It was missing uh, many features that uh, the IBM PC, which was released shortly after this, had. Uh, it didn't have an internal hard drive. There was no no language at all in ROM. It, did have, it does have a monitor, uh, so you can program the assembly language, but there's no language in the Apple III. Um, and as, as we saw earlier, the, the languages that were supposed to be available didn't show. Uh, so there was really no way to develop for this thing. Um, users, they wanted a high resolution color monitor to, to, to take advantage of the uh, improved graphical specs of the inbuilt RGB. And the other big one was that people thought it should have had a 68,000 chip instead of a 6502. Do you know what the three easy pieces application came up with? Uh, I think that was that was in the fall of 80, I think I recall. So it, it was it was out, but it wasn't soon enough. Uh, well, and, and part of it was, you know, you heard Waz talk about they put chips in to, to disable to, to cripple emulation. But the only software that you could use was the Apple II software, so the users were kind of stuck. Um, and yeah, so Windows emulation, not emulation. Um, in addition to, to limiting users' uh, access to the Apple II software, because they, they said it had to have the 6502 chip in it in order to emulate, uh, it seriously limited Wendell Sanders' designs for the thing. Uh, he had a bigger plan for it than he was able to. At one point, they considered making it a multi-chip uh, multi machine or adding a, a co-processor card, but uh, that was considered to be too expensive. Um, Apple didn't want their users to think of they, Apple wanted their users to think of the three as a serious computer. Um, if you wanted to play games, well, get an Apple II. Um, and the, the emulation was also limited because they didn't want to cut into Apple II sales, which was still growing strong. Would continue to strong over many more years. Um, as far as legacy, uh, SOS was the operating system, and many, uh, many of the concepts that first showed up in SOS uh, lived on in Protoss. And in fact, uh, and I don't know how many versions of Protoss it's continued into, but uh, at least for 1.7, uh, boot block zero on any bootable Protoss disk had the, pro had the Protoss boot code. Block one had uh, SOS code so that it can boot into either the operating system would take a look and say which machine am I running on and they need to boot across the SOS. Because they share the same file system. What's that? Because they share the same file system. Right. Yeah. Well, and the guy, I think, uh, I forget what his name was, the guy that designed uh, uh, SOS uh, went on to do a lot of work on Protoss and then later on Macintosh. So when you see a lot of this stuff, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> 
look at our new applicants here. Uh, the final uh, estimated install base was 75,000 units, 65,000 were uh, the original Apple threes, and an additional 10,000 for plus machines. Um, I forgot to add this in there, but the first 14,000 machines had to be replaced. So they, they lost a lot of money on this. Was, was the three plus uh, quite a bit. Sarah is also only on classic Mac OS? Yes, yeah, they basically stopped developing it. It was kind of a proof of concept, hey, we can sort of get it working in one there. Uh, today there are a couple of ongoing hardware projects, um, mostly on the Apple free mailing list. Um, the great thing about the part of the design here was that because it was electrically uh, compatible with the Apple II, Cards and because SOS addressed everything as devices, basically, if you can write a device driver for it, you can use any, almost any Apple II expansion card. That includes the CFFA <coughs> card. So you, have, you know, I, I've got a CFFA card in the one upstairs, a 512 bank card that's, that runs great. Um, and somebody on the Apple III list right now uh, is building boards that you can use a disk two drive on the Apple III. There are still some loyal users out there. Is there any special reason why the interface is different for the Apple III drives than the It um, has to do with the design of the analog board. I'm not real sure on the specifics. But, but it is, they're still yeah. the same 140K disks, right? Uh, yes. The mechanism, I think, is different. It's a daisy chain problem. There's a middle oh. wire that uh, daisy chains through the drive. It's the first daisy chain drive. Oh, it's a daisy chain system. So okay. that it just chains the cable. Okay. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Also from, um, I remember reading somewhere at some point, isn't it true that in order to get any card recognized in the Apple III, including a hard disk or anything else, you do have to invent boot a floppy first to get the driver? Yes, you basically. That, that you can't actually put ROM on a card and have it boot like right. that. Right, that's because of the, the, the basically non-existent ROM code on the motherboard. It does the diagnostic and it sends it everything and then it turns it right over to the floppy drive. It doesn't scan slots, doesn't look at anything. Design flaw too. Yeah. So the floppy drive doesn't have a slot? What's that? No. Okay. No, it's it's uh, built on the, the plug is built on the board. <coughs> but I mean, like yeah, a, a logical slot. Well, an Apple foot yeah. inflation, but I assume it must have. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, you can't boot. You can't boot to a profile drive. You can't boot to the CFFA. It's kind of it's it's sort of a, a rudimentary version of like recompiling a kernel into Linux. You, know, you you have to load the drivers into whatever floppy disk you're using. And if you, if, and this this PowerPoint presentation without the minus the movie will be available on the uh, KansasFest.org website. So if you want to dig into it further, there's plenty of resources out there. Um, most of the most of the manuals and a lot of the magazines relating to the Apple III at the time uh, during the time period and scanned are available online. How many floppy drives? So what's the basic chain system? How many floppy drives could we attach to an Apple III? Three internal three plus the Yes, one internal, three external. So, SOS is D1 through D4? Yeah, but they were devices, they weren't. They didn't see them as drives. 
device and sees everything in the device. And uh, oh yes, uh, Tony is previously brought down his, uh, this is an Apple III Plus prototype. Yeah, I don't know much about it, so I'll let Tony talk about it. Does it work? These are not this, this particular Apple 3 Plus has a different keyboard marketing for the 3 Plus. One of the things that they pushed was they put it next to a 2E and they showed you using three easy pieces at the office. And then you can take your work home with you and go and use it on your Apple 2E because the keyboard was the same layout. And Apple Works files were compatible back and forth between the two platforms. This is one of the ways they were trying to mess with it. And it came with 256K standard instead of the 128 option that the, uh, the, the 3 came with. I don't think they ever actually shipped that. But that's what the, the 3 drive looked like. I think they gave up on external drives at this point and swapped the profiles. And uh, in addition to you saw the motherboard going around, and it had the red lines with your bus, bar, bus bars going down the middle of each row. The Apple III motherboard went to four layer and eliminated all that. And if you, after you're done, get up, you get up looking at you, you'll see that this board is so So how many native Apple III software fails are there? Um, five, seven. <laughs> <laughs> Less than 50. Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty. Yeah. Yeah. All, almost all of them ships right around the time the 3 Plus was produced. The 3 Plus was only in the market for about four months. In, in January to April. Which is why it hurt. So why did they produce that machine and then make the decision? Because within, within they, 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 they saw just absolutely no blip, no change, whatever. They're like, okay, get out of here. Did Jobs on record is saying anything about it? They lost their own mind. Infinite amounts of The gap accounting people and the Sarbox people would have kittens over the way they handled it. <laughs> the, uh, the, did you, did you, the other thing is, did you ever notice the issue of Soft Talk that had, there was a couple issues of Soft Talk that had mods? Oh, yeah. There, there, were, some, there were some new mods that you could do. That. You could, they talked about hardware mods on the motherboard to bring back the functionality of Apple III, uh, yeah. that 80 column in, in oh. emulation mode, yeah. and patches to the disk to bring back stuff. And then later the, what was it, Titan? Titan from made, three, a, yeah. put, made an actual uh, card, two, a two card system that you could plug in that would, it, it's it's only designed was to break down that, that emulation for quickly. Uh, two, three plus two, and then three plus two E, so you had, Two card, and then you had a two E card to put on top of that to bring back four features out of this. I, I see three the four slots. Yeah. No, two, well, two of the slots. Two of the slots. I see that the keyboard has Open Apple and Solid Apple, which preceded the two E, obviously. Um, this is three plus. Oh, that's three plus. It's got yeah, this was the this was the third keyboard. Yeah. Oh yeah. So the, the keys are right only. Oh yeah. Oh, okay. oh they're there. Yeah. Okay. They're yeah. Open Apple, they Solid Apple. Yeah, they yeah. preceded. And, and do they still map to uh, button zero and one or? Yeah. Yeah, the, 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 the nine pin ports in the back there could be, you could plug a, an Apple II joystick into it, you have to modify the joystick to work. But so some of the stuff in here made it to the 2E. Oh yeah, it's part of that. And if you go back and look at the, the reference manual for this, yeah. the device driver and then the uh, SOS reference manual, volume one and two, you'll see in the back, Protoss file types, reserve file types. Those. Yeah. But this is 1981, this is two yeah. years before Protoss before existed. Protoss. So basically, we have uh, the Apple III to blame for 15 character file names. <laughs> no spaces. And no spaces. And no spaces, yes. Uh, did you say that it was a 6502A? Yes. Was that before you cut it down? I saw that too. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's the same thing. Okay. Is, so what is that versus a 6502 or 65C? There's really optical speed. No, no, no. I mean, no, it has the same opcodes. Uh, yeah, I thought it was two bigger. Right, C has more opcodes. 6502A can be run two bigger. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. 
and, 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 the, and the two E also has a combo two A, but it's still random. Enhances. Push me further time. What? Enhances two E's. Yes, enhances two E's have secrets. There was a different I, I meant the original two E's. Yeah. It was definitely a different die for manufacturing the chips. So. Oh, so did they change the floppy connector on the three plus? Yeah, that's yes. where they were going with this. Oh, they they, they, they actually changed it to the twenty five. And of yeah. course, you've got the parallel port. Oh, good, good. Right. And so right. so right. 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 Oh, yeah. Must have the two plus was Genius. So one of the one of the things that were running was running around was the first little cute peripheral that somebody made up was a little block that you there was a potted block that had a DB25 on it and an IDC26 in a in a glob of pot so that you could stick the old drives back on the back of this thing. Yeah, it was just it was just the, it was the same. It was because it was incompatible just with the pole support. Ran, ran, right. Rana had had elite drives for the three. There was yeah. tons of of uh, disc two for the three, as Apple called it, where the faceplate actually has a the two with an I in the middle that says right. disc two for the three. <laughs> before they before they did this, they could have had another model block with three DP or uh, IDC twenty connectors for disc two. Wasn't one of the other complaints that you know for a business machine as compared to the NPC, certainly like the keyboard was not detachable. Monitor 100 has the yes, bank upward angle that yes, goes right. here and fits within this. There was a there was an AMDEC made monitor, uh, monitor that they released shortly after this came out. That was just the Android XRD. Yeah, but Apple didn't have anything for quite some time. Hit him with a piece of trivia. Sure. <coughs> what was the what was the uh, most unique? This computer would uh, not work if what was broken. Ooh, 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 ooh! Power light. Power light. Really? If you pluck out the power light, this little bolt right here burned out, or you pull it out, the machine wouldn't move. It can't. They wired up with an air pack. An error code? Yes. Error code. What was so it? Knew it. it knew it. So they sensed the power, the, the, the level, and it was a pull down on that. Yeah. Well, so to answer the question, well, essentially, you had to have a ball yes, or resistor. Yes. <laughs> ah, okay. It does. I thought you were going to say I, I know it does. I thought it might be arguing the other way. There, there were a couple of things that were going to be different. And if you're really interested in, in the a deep look at the, the engineering part of it, take so a look at the Apple, applelogic.org. They have an article where they go into it, and uh, so it's really smart. You have to replace with the wire. You have to resistor. A simple wire wouldn't work. Too much. Another error. I do know a lot of older cars that ran the sense wire for the alternator through the. It me a long time to figure out how to turn it on by the Oh, it does have this new feature where you I had to do a lot of research on that bulb, burn out the cursor. Pull this bulb, put a new bulb in. All right, let's go. That's it.